Okay, so tonight we're gonna make Thai a curry, yeah, Thai curried chicken. Um, we've got white rice on cooking. It just came to a boil. We are bringing it down to an extremely low heat. And on a gas burner, it's very easy to do. You can bring it all the way down. You let it simmer. You watch that. It's about 20 minutes to cook. And that's how long our whole meal should take us to prepare. So, let's get started. We'll get our wok going. Keep it as high up as it'll go. We want to put about two teaspoons, according to the recipe, I say about two tablespoons. Um, we'll get that going good and hot. As soon as you start seeing smoke coming off of it, I already preheated my pan just a little bit, so this won't take very long at all. Um, we got about four ounces of red curry paste, Thai red curry paste in the jar. I like getting it this way because it's already pre-made. You don't have to grind your spices. You don't have to do none of that. This will start getting really fragrant and it's going to pop a little so be careful. We're actually going to turn our heat down just a tiny bit. The heat dispersion is going to walk very well. So, we'll get that curry paste cooked and start cooking. Oh, it's starting to smell real good. We're going to use our basket thing here to Get our curry paste really going here. I don't want to burn it, so we're just going to keep it moving a little. Out of the way now. It smells like food. Okay, next goes in our. Carrots, onions, and peppers. So, onions. Carrots. Peppers. And broccoli. Now, this is where we're going to bump our heat back up as high as it'll go. This is a wok. It can handle the heat. Mine's been being seasoned now for almost... Well, it's older than him. John, get your hands off of that. People have to eat that food, buddy. Um... My wok's older than my son's, so I've had it now for probably about eight or nine years. About a year or so older than my son. Might even be older than that. Might be about ten years old. I know Publix sold them and still sells them every once in a blue moon. Okay, so we're cooking this until we got to basically mix all of that curry paste in with that. We're cooking this down until our onions are translucent. Once our onions are translucent, we're ready to go to the next step. And this takes about 10 minutes ish. Meanwhile, we got our rice going. I put a, ta a teaspoon of salt and a tablespoon of butter in with the rice. Uh, two, two cups of water to one cup of rice. And put a lid on it, bring it to a boil. 
Once it's set a boil, bring it back down to a simmer on really low heat. Leave it covered, 20 minutes. Done. From start to finish, should be about 20 minutes. And you start the rice cold. Always start your rice cold. Yeah, I got I'm not used to using I haven't used my wok in a while, so I'm not as accustomed to keep it. I got to keep it learn remember to keep it over the heat. And keep it centered over the heat on the oven or the stove. Okay. Now, we're going to need two actually one and a half cups of the recipe calls for water I personally want to add more flavor so instead of water we're going to put in um, we're going to put in the uh, let's widen oops that's the wrong way right? Now that ought to allow me to talk a little bit better, more directly at the camera there. And hopefully it looks looks better for you guys. Um, in this situation, I don't use my walk on the induction burner. Not that it won't work. Just gas, the heat travels up the side so much better and you can get so many more BTUs. You should hear that thing sizzling every time something goes across it. All the onions are almost completely translucent. So, at this point, this is almost ready for the next step. Very bright colors right now. It's going to be a red curry. So, it's going to be a really bright, it's going to be a Almost uh, tomatoey red color. So I've got one and a half cups of what the recipe calls for cold water. I say should be chicken stock and a can of coconut milk. Now down here, please. And the coconut milk is very yummy. I buy it canned. I do actually have actual coconut. We got some coconut palms out back. Every once in a while we'll get some fresh coconuts and I will save them for a special meal or something to cook with. So now at this point we can add a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. I forgot to get my salt and my pepper out. So my fingers got water on it. You want to try to keep your fingers as dry as possible when you do this. So, salt. Pepper. It's about a half a teaspoon or a quarter of a teaspoon of pepper and a half a teaspoon of salt at this point. You don't want to overdo it. All right, so the onions are translucent at this point. We're at about 10 minutes. We're gonna take our coconut milk, pour coconut milk in. This makes four servings, guys. Coconut milk, and then I use the chicken stock. And we'll put the lid right back on that can. That's why I rinsed it off. Go like this, and then you've cleaned the can and you've used all the coconut milk. And then add the rest of your stock. Now we're going to bring this up to a boil.
Oh, it's got some beautiful color, guys. Look at that beautiful creamy orangish color. Now, this has to come up to a boil. It will thicken some. But at this point, we want to add our not yet, baby. Daddy's still cooking. Potatoes. And I told you this is chicken curry. Now, potatoes are going to absorb some of that water. And there's your chicken. Now, I'm not sure how much footage I've got and if I'll be able to bring it all down into the um, allotted amount of time that I want to use for my vlogs, but I may just take and, and actually this will serve, this amount will serve more than four. I'm sorry. The recipe, they, whoever wrote the recipe had something wrong with their in their noggin. This will definitely feed more than four. Um, but it does need to come up to a boil and it does need to cook for a little bit so the liquid can cook down a bit. And that chicken needs time to cook and potatoes need time to cook. So this whole meal from beginning to end should take you approximately 30 minutes Minus your prep work. Prep should be probably about a good, I don't know, I think I spent 15 minutes-ish prepping. Depending on how fast you go, it depend on how quick you get done with your prep. All right. So what we're going to do here when the timer goes, the timer's getting close to going off. We're going to switch to a wooden spoon. It makes it a lot easier to move a bamboo spoon in this case. Um, could use chopsticks. Don't really want to. This works really well. We're just going to make sure all the chicken, everything stay, and chicken and potatoes are all submerged and in there. This is almost, this is getting close to being in a boil. I have that heat on as high as it will go. You can see the, the steam coming off of it. Um, we're going to pull that off there. It's just a few minutes early from being done. Take a fork. Check it. And run your fork through it. And it should fluff it right up. Nothing sticking to the bottom. Now you can add flavors to your rice, but since we're doing a curry, I didn't want to add too much. Very good. I didn't want to add too much color to the rice. The rice is really good. We're going to close it off and let it steam up to the last of it. But I can guarantee you this is done. Yep, this is done. It's perfectly cooked. Very hot. Almost almost has a buttery creamy taste to it it's perfect okay we're up to a boil now we want this to really boil personally this is not my favorite way of doing chicken but this is a new recipe I found that seemed a little bit simpler and it called for the ingredients that I had uh, the way I'm used to, we build our sauce, we build our curry, but I didn't have the spices and everything to grind, and I broke my 
I broke my mor my last mortar and pestle. So next month I'm buying a new mortar and pestle and I'm probably going to start grinding my own spices again. And then it's going to be trying to find some place that sells the whole spices. Now, when you wash your wok, you wash it like you wash cast iron. You can use hot water and that's it. If you have to get something that you burned on off, use salt and hot water. Otherwise, you just use salt, you use hot water and a scrub pad, a very light scrub pad, and you just scour it just ever so gently. Make sure you got any food residue off, but you want to leave a certain amount of the you want to leave the fond on the wok. The fond will build over years and years and years of use and it gives your wok a very unique flavor as to what you cook in it. So if you cook a lot of Thai food, your wok will develop a Thai fla uh, flavor for the Thai food and it will actually enhance the Thai food that you're cooking. So now what I would like to do here is I'm going to get, grab me a tasting spoon and I want a nice little taste. I just want to make sure that curry is just right. Okay, that can definitely use a little more salt. We're okay on black pepper. just a touch not a lot just a touch people overdo this and then they ruin their food just a touch of cayenne pepper not huge amounts we try it a little we mix that we blend that in we'll try it a bit Alright, that's blended. Now, I'm going to give it a try. That's much better. Absolutely much better. Tiniest bit more of this. Not much. You do not want to add heat. You're just adding a bite. <laughs> You could very well add heat to it by adding some more cayenne pepper. And then if you really wanted some heat, then you could jump up to some sriracha. The sriracha will add more of that Thai flavor and the heat that you're looking for. Because it's, it's chilies. Sriracha chili. So... All right, that's that 20 minute timer that was for our rice. And as you see, our rice actually got done earlier. What it is, is you start your rice cold in the pan, in cold water, or well, hottest water you can come off the tap with. Zero. Uh, a tablespoon of salt, a tablespoon of butter, and you start it on high, bring it up to a boil. Bring it down to a simmer, simmer for about eight minutes, eight and a half minutes, and then it's done. The whole process takes about 18 minutes. Now you can do the same recipe with the green curry too, the Thai green curry. But then you would use 
other colors that stand out against the green. Lots of reds and whatnot. Oh, guys, that is awesome. That is absolutely perfect. Okay, we are turning off the heat. For both. One for our rice, one for our curry. I like to use this, this one for my rice, the deeper one for my curry. Okay, rice is ready, take the lid off, we'll spoon up the rice about halfway in a bowl this size. For my daughter it's going to be a little under half, we're not giving her quite as much. She uh, doesn't eat as much as everybody else. What is this? It's curry chicken buddy. So we divide our rice, one cup will do four servings, I eat a little extra, and my son gets a little extra because he's still growing and he's good with it, he, he'll eat it. And I'm not overfeeding him. He'll burn off the energy, uh, more so than me. Unfortunately, I think in many ways I'm overfeeding myself, I'm putting on weight because of my cooking. And even cooking healthier, you know, I... I <laughs> I laugh because everybody says I cook in the Paula Deen fashion. That's butter. Everything's better with more butter um, and, and more f fat. And yes, that's true, but it's also a little bit on the false side. I try to use healthy oils. Mm, that's good. Um, I try to find healthy ways of preparing the meals. That's why I cook at home. Okay, so we'll divide this up. Make sure you get plenty of that curry sauce and chicken and vegetables all on there. My daughter doesn't get quite as much, but she'll get some. That's yeah, not going to hurt her. A little bit more curry sauce. Alrighty. Don't want to make a mess, guys. Don't want to make a mess. Ah, there it is. Keep your towel handy. This way you can wipe your bowls down if you make a mess. In a restaurant, we would not tolerate a dirty bowl, and I try not to at home. I want my bowls to be, my food to be presentable, as if it were going to sit down in my restaurant. And just like in a restaurant, I make sure before the bowls go out. Every bowl has, this bowl's mine, this bowl will be my son's, and this one's my daughter's. Okay, that's Madeline's. Madeline! What? It's dinner time, baby. Your bowl's right over there on the counter. John, get ready for dinner. Your dinner's coming right now. Chicken stock away. Okay. Is this a cream of soup? Uh, no, it's curry chicken. It's vegetables, a sauce, and rice. It's not anything super special. It's yummy. You'll like it. Uh, Madeline, I don't see your cup anywhere, honey. Did you leave it in the bathroom? Alright guys, um, I'm done serving up. Um, 
You all have a wonderful, wonderful evening. I hope you give this recipe a try. It is very delicious. Um, it's easy to make. 30 minutes from start to finish for the whole thing. Um, trying to get recipes that are you know easy fix and time saving and inexpensive. Tomorrow, um, I'm doing, Madeline, you drink something on the other side of the counter, go over there, you sit down and eat. Uh, put your placement down too. Um, so, what I'm going to do, oh, we're going to turn that on, leave that one on. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed making the uh, Thai curry chicken with me. Um, it's a wonderful recipe, it tastes delicious. Um, it's a little bit different than a Indian curry, so you need to understand that there is a little bit of a difference in flavor. Um, Thai, uh, Thai curries tend to have more Thai chili spices and things in it, or, and it can be much, much hotter. Um, not to say Indian curry can't be hot, but Indian curry has a little bit of a different depth of flavor. Both are very delicious. Um, I encourage you to try to make both. We will make um, an Indian curry one night, um, and I'll show you the difference in how they're made. Um, hopefully by then I'll have my mortar and pestle, and I'll be able to grind the spices properly, and we'll have a very fresh, aromatic, you know, made from scratch. Indian curry. Um, that being said, um, give the recipe a try. I hope you enjoy it. Keep your chins up, keep your spirits high, and cook more.